Savoia Tech Cast Castable Resin. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, I've been using this resin for a few weeks now, but I haven't actually reviewed it. And as my reviews typically show how to use a product, now seems a really good time to do just that. I was very honoured to be asked by Soraya Tech to be the first person outside of their company to test this resin. So a lot of what follows is purely guesswork and could very well be improved upon. Frankly, I had no idea what I was doing when I had a bash at the Amerilabs town test print. But sometimes you just get lucky. Here's the settings I used on my Elegu Mars 2 Pro and here's the print. I was very impressed, so I've never wavered from my initial guess. You may achieve better results with a little tinkering, and Soraya Tech are publishing their suggested printer settings, for which I'll include a link in the description. Soraya Tech's resins typically prefer warm temperatures, but personally I printed purely at room temperature, which in my home is in the low 20s Celsius. The one thing I will say about this resin is the colour. It seems to have very strong pigmentation and sends your whole world purple until you've cleaned everything very well. But with that said, the prints have always impressed me, sticking well to the build plate without any issues, coping with all sizes of support and retaining excellent levels of detail. Cleaning is surprisingly involved. As is typical, a good rinse in IPA is the way to start, after which a blast of cool air gets rid of the excess. I'm using a cheap hairdryer here, which has a cool setting. At that point, the print needs to be rinsed for 30 seconds in hot water. How hot? I don't know, it's just straight from my kitchen faucet. After that, it's rinsed for 30 seconds in cold water. How cold? Again, straight from the tap works fine. Another blast of cool air and maybe a little shake should dry the print enough to clip away the supports. Now, I always clip away the supports before curing. It helps me spot any problems with the print before continuing. I did find the resin a little brittle to clip, so don't clip too close to the print. Because I typically over support my prints, I often find areas of uncured resin hiding, and, if that's the case, it's back to the cleaning process once again. Soraya Tech from the off warned me that this resin needs to be cured before casting. Typically, a print would be placed under a UV lamp, but that's not immediately recommended here. As I understand it, curing in air does not allow the print to shed oxygen, which it needs to do for ideal results as there's plenty of air around to replace what's driven out. One possible solution might be to place the print in water. But unfortunately, the print can absorb some of this, and that too can spoil the finish. The solution, it seems, is vegetable glycerin. It's nice cheap stuff, relatively harmless and readily available. It allows UV light through it to cure the print. It allows oxygen to be emitted, and importantly, it doesn't get absorbed into the print. Plus, you only need to buy one bottle, as you can reuse it time and time again. And I like saving money where I can. A little research suggested to me that glass can inhibit the flow of UV light. However, that same research suggested that one of the best materials to redirect UV light is aluminium, or aluminium as our American cousins say. So I took a foil pie dish, shaped this around the inside of a bowl, and poured in the glycerin. Now in theory, the UV can bounce all around, maximising exposure. The biggest problem here though, is that prints within this resin float, which makes things trickier. I also found bubbles naturally occur around the print. To remedy both these problems, I initially dipped the print into the glycerin, pull it free and allow the majority to run off. This adds a thin coating across the print, which seems to discourage the bubbles. I then sank the print with the aid of something heavy, like this bolt. In the future, I might cast myself some small hooks. 
With this done, the bowl can be placed in the UV chamber. The Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus really helps at this point, as the turntable seems strong enough to carry the weight of the bowl, and the tilting light array should ensure good coverage. But a foil covered box and a UV lamp will do the job just as well. Soriatech suggested that I cure for around 30 to 40 minutes, but as I always overdo things, I cured for an hour, revisiting every 10 minutes or so to reposition the print for even coverage. Once fully cooked, the print is again rinsed in hot water for 30 seconds, then cold water for 30 seconds. I blasted with cool air to dry and finally rinsed for 30 seconds more in clean IPA before a final blast of cool air to dry. The cured print tidies up nicely and responds very well to sandpaper. I found fine grade paper easily removed any leftover support nubs and also cleaned up any printer lines that I could see. The purple is okay to look at, but as I've said before, I like a nice grey. It's easier on the eye and allows me to see any imperfections that much easier. I did find sanding made the print powdery in appearance, but a quick rinse under the tap fixed this. Wax stuck well to the print, so sprueing isn't an issue. Soriatech assured me any burnout used by most common plasters will work fine, and I have to say it has for me. I've genuinely done nothing different to normal. I've consistently found burnout to be clean and I've produced some castings that I've been thrilled with. One issue I have encountered is typical to all castable resins I believe, and that's freshness, for want of a better term. Most resins recommend you filter and re-bottle immediately after use, and for testing purposes, I kept this resin in the tray for three weeks. I stirred the resin well and printed with it, and everything seemed fine but the casting had its share of flaws. So remember, print and re-bottle your castable resin as soon as possible, not just with this brand, but with all brands. So, we have a castable resin that prints great, sands great, and casts perfectly. So that means it's gonna cost a fortune, right? Well, it is a speciality resin, so it's not gonna be a rock bottom price, but it came on sale in the US on Tuesday the 18th of May, and it sold out by Thursday the 20th of May, all at the bargain price of just $75. And I'm thrilled to say that most of these bottles went to my viewers, who took my tip and got in quickly. But if you weren't lucky enough to get one, they'll be back in two to three weeks, I'm told, so watch out for them. And if you're not in the US, don't worry, Soriatech will be shipping worldwide soon. I'll try to let you know when. But $75 is an excellent price for a castable resin that works as well as this one. And remember, for that money, you get a one kilogram bottle with the best part of a liter inside. So it really is great value. You may think it's hard for me to be completely impartial with this review, but I assure you, no money has changed hands. I volunteered for this task, and other than a free bottle of resin, Soriatech has given me nothing and made no demands upon me. And those that know me best know that my honesty won't allow me to feed you guys b So, cleaning is a pain. It's quite involved with both IPA and water rinses. UV curing in glycerin leads to yet more rinsing and washing. And the cleaning doesn't stop there, because this purple is strong, and you'll find yourself cleaning your equipment much more thoroughly than normal. But do you know what? These problems are no big deal. What seems fiddly and time consuming the first time around quickly becomes the norm, and frankly, it's not all that involved. It's certainly not difficult. You can try to ignore some of these steps if you wish, but they were the ones suggested to me by Soriatech and I found that they were great, so I'll be sticking to them. The prints were as good as those that I've achieved with far more expensive resins, and the castings were equally impressive. And at this fabulous price, more people are going to be able to try casting, and those of us already loving the hobby,
can spend our savings on something else. But it won't just be amateurs that will be using this resin. There's plenty of professionals seeking a quality resin at an affordable price. And I think we've finally found it. I'm confident that Soriatech have produced an excellent resin here and that in the hands of a professional, it will work wonders as after all, in the hands of this amateur, it's proven pretty darn good. I think you'll agree. So, if you've never bought a castable resin before, buy this one. It's affordable and will work for you, with no printing or casting issues typically associated with far more expensive resins. And if you're experienced with castable resins, give this one a try. You're likely to be thrilled by the results and save yourself a bundle in the future. It's new, so there's not many on the shelves yet, and they're sending out as soon as they come in. But that tells you something, doesn't it? So keep an eye out for when they're next available. But my final verdict? Soriatech Cast is an absolute winner. So that's it for this video, guys. Feel free to drop me a line with your questions and comments, and I'll do my best to reply. So take care, and thanks for watching.